Welcome back, peacemakers. This is Adnan Habul, your guide through the turbulent waters of international affairs on the Peacemaker by Adnan Habul channel. Today we speak about a decision by the International Court of Justice, or ICJ, on the provisional measures and what it means for Israel, Palestinians, you, me and the rest of the world. Stay with me until the end of this video, like, subscribe and I'll give you some insights on the implications and consequences of the ICJ uh, decision. And a hint about who actually wins in this legal battle at the end of the day. So let's begin. On January 26, uh, 2024, the International Court of Justice, or ICJ, delivered its ruling on the provisional measures requested by the South Africa in its genocide case uh, against Israel over the war on the Gaza Strip. In short, the court said, among others, that Israel must uh, take steps to prevent acts of genocide in Gaza, but without ordering a ceasefire. Hmm. Of course, as expected, the judges uh, have not ruled on the merits of the genocide allegations, which may take years to decide. And now what? Given the statement of uh, Israeli Prime Minister ben Benjamin Netanyahu on 13th January 2024, that, I quote, no one will stop us, meaning Israel, not the Hague, not the axis of evil, uh, end quote, it is hard to believe that Israel will fully comply with provisional measures of the ICJ. Maybe they will just uh, uh, a bit uh, become more careful in public or slightly reduce the intensity of shelling, but no substantial change uh, can be expected. In my opinion, Palestinians in Gaza, but also uh, in the West Bank, are still doomed to extinction. And the world will again lament over that tragedy by repeating that never again, which we have heard after the Holocaust, genocide in Rwanda, genocide in Bosnia, and most likely we will listen to the same BS after the campaign in Gaza is over. Now let's imagine this. What will happen if Israel refuses to implement the provisional measures ordered by the ICJ that are legally binding? Let me remind you. Israel is a state with a long-lasting non-compliance record with so many decisions by the United Nations and it is still a member state of the very same organization. This country has not suffered any serious damage so far, being under the protection of the USA, a powerful state that is a member of the United Nations Security Council with veto power. In other words, the Article 94 of the UN Charter that provides that Security Council may, call, may be called uh, upon to enforce the ICJ's judgment will be most probably vetoed in the United Nations Security Council. It brings another legitimate question. What does this case in general mean for international laws and international relations? After all, what it means for all of us as we live in this world with the laws of the jungle and have no backup option. So 
it means the following. Undermining the effectiveness and legitimacy of international institutions, such as ICJ and the United Nations. The refusal of a state, especially one with a history of non-compliance to implement provisional measures, challenges the effectiveness and legitimacy of international institutions, such as the ICJ and the United Nations. It raises questions about ability of these institutions to enforce uh, their decisions when powerful states are involved. Next is uh, undermining the Genocide Convention's purpose. The refusal to implement provisional measures in, case, in a case involving the prevention and punishment of genocide undermines the purpose and principles of the Genocide Convention. Genocide is considered one of the most heinous crimes under international law, and the Convention reflects the international community's commitment to preventing and punishing such acts. Non-compliance in this context raises concerns about the effectiveness of international efforts to address grave human rights violations. The next, uh, it challenges uh, the very essence of United Nations uh, Security Council. If the non-complying state is under the protection of a powerful state with the veto power in the U United Nations Security Council, it may be difficult or impossible to bring the matter to the Security Council for enforcement. The use of the veto power can prevent the Council from taking effective action, leading to a deadlock and hampering the Council's ability to maintain international peace and security. So, this brings a legitimate uh, or uh, logical continuation. It requires reform and strengthening of international institutions. The scenario may uh, prompt discussions and calls for reform to strengthen international institutions and me mechanisms for enforcing compliance with international laws. Efforts to enhance accountability, address veto power issues and improve the enforceability of international decisions could be on the agenda, but we will see it will, uh, will it be. The next is erosion of international norms. Uh, if uh, Israel again ignores the uh, ruling of uh, UN institutions, uh, in this scenario that I, uh, I described uh, may contribute to eroding the normative framework of international law. If powerful states consistently defy international legal obligations without facing any consequences, it could set a precedent that uh, weakens the overall effectiveness of international law and encourages other states to similarly disregard their obligations. In that case, any condemnation of the Russian ag aggression against Ukraine and any war crimes committed there would be mildly said ridiculous. Next implication is diplomatic and political consequence. The situation could lead to increased diplomatic tensions and political fallout. Other states and international actors may express strong condemnation and relationships uh, between the non-complying state and the international community could be tense. This will hardly help 
or reduce the suffering of the Palestinians in Gaza, to be quite honest with you. But uh, there is potential for unilateral actions. Frustrated by the lack of international response, states or coalitions of individual states may consider talking about uh, unilateral actions, such as imposing sanctions or pursuing alternative avenues for accountability. However, such actions can themselves uh, raise legal and political challenges. Can we expect any sanctions from oil and gas producer countries, for instance? I am not sure. We will see if any of them would do anything. What do you think? Please leave your comments and let's discuss. In summary, the scenario I describe presents a serious challenge to the international legal order and its uh, implications uh, extend beyond the specific case at hand. It underscores the need for ongoing effort to strengthen international institutions and foster a collective commitment to uh, upholding the rule of law in the international arena. So, I already uh, published on my channel one video uh, in which I claim that uh, whatever ICJ rules or decides, it won't matter. Please watch that video as a prepara uh, preparation for this video or after this video. So, this is all for today. Stay well and safe. Until next time, bye.